now and pause this recording. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and translate this code. And the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the code and think about uh, what's going on um, uh, that I'm going to need to do. So the first thing I look at at this code is it's a leaf function, which means that it doesn't call any other functions. And that means I'm probably not going to have to allocate a stack frame for it because it's not using a lot of variables. The second thing I'm looking at is the arguments that are passed in and the return values. So for example, this has three arguments. And so these are going to get passed in through register A0, register A1, and register A2. And the return value is going to be passed through V0, which means rather than allocate count to some register and have to copy it at the end, I'm going to go ahead and allocate it to V0 from the get-go. Um, and then I have one other variable here, I, in the code, which I'm going to have to allocate. And I'm going to go ahead and use a temporary register T0 for that variable so that I don't have to uh, do any um, callee saved registers and therefore have to allocate a stack frame. So having looked at that um, and thought about what my variables are and allocated in the registers, I'm now free to look at the code. I can see that in this code I have both a loop and an if statement and so each of those is going to at least require a branch. And so at this point I think I'm ready to go ahead and translate the code. And so I have my initial label for count letters, um, which is at the beginning of the function. And the first thing I have to do is initialize this count variable. So I'm going to use a load immediate instruction to set v0 to be 0. And again, this v0 uh, you know, is the count variable. Um, then I go and I look to this loop and I'm going to uh, write the code for the loop initialization. Again, I'm going to initialize i, um, which I said was in t0, to 0. Um, so t0 is i. Um, now to write the loop, I'm going to um, in this case, I have to consider the case where string length is zero, in which case we won't execute any iterations at all. And so I have to put this condition at the top of the loop. And so I'm going to have a label, CL loop, which is going to be the top of my loop. And I'm going to test whether um, I is less than string length. I'm actually going to invert that condition to be uh, see whether i is greater than or equal to string length. So I'm going to use a branch of greater than or equal of i, which is in register t0, uh, comparing it to string length, which is in a1. And if it is greater than, that's the exit condition of the loop. So I'll go to cl exit. And so I'm prefacing all of my labels here with cl, which is an abbreviation of count letters. And that way, these labels are more likely to be uh, specific to um, this function that I'm writing. So I've, I've now handled this part. Um, this I handle at the end of the loop, so I'm ready to go on into the body of the loop, which is this if statement. And to do that, I have to, to load the current element of the array and compare it to C, which is one of the arguments passed in. And so in order to do this, load, I first have to generate that address. And so in order to generate that address, I need to know uh, the type of um, array that's being passed in um, and uh, because I need to know how much I need to scale this i by. It turns out that's an array of characters and so um, each character is a single byte big, and so I don't actually have to scale i at all. That I can find the location of the ith character, generate the address of the ith character by just adding i to the pointer at the beginning of the array. So this, this, what's the value in a0 is effectively a pointer to the beginning of 
the array of characters, and to get to the ith character, I have to add i to that. And so that's pretty easy. I can generate a uh, temporary for the address um, of the ith character. I'm going to use the next t register, t1, by adding the, the base of the array, a0, to, um, to i, which is in t0. So this is now, so t1 is the address of the ith character, and now we're in a position to do a load. And because it's an array of characters, I'm going to do a load byte, because I only want to grab a single byte, and I'm going to load that into t2, uh, and I'm taking the zero offset from the address we just loaded. And so basically I'm dereferencing that pointer, and I could have put this into T1, but um, there's no reason I have to. Uh, I have a lot of T registers at my disposal. Um, so now I've lo loaded that byte, and now I'm ready to do this comparison. And so, again, I'm going to invert this condition. I'm actually going to check whether it's not equal, and if so, skip over this. And so I'm going to do a branch if not equal, see if T2 is the same as C, which is passed in through a2, in which case I'm going to go to C, I'll skip. So if we don't skip over this, we want to do this increment. So this increment is adding 1 to count. Count again is in V0, so I say add into V0 from V0 of 1. So now I can, that's all I need to do for the inside of that loop. So I can have CL skip, the label for CL skip. Um, and now I'm almost done with the loop. The thing I have to do is I have to handle this uh, I++ plus plus in the code. And so that's just adding one to I. So I need an add instruction. And I is in T0. So I take it out of T0, add 1 to it, and put it back into T0. And now I'm done with the loop. All I need to do is get back to the beginning of the loop. And so I then add an unconditional jump back to the beginning of the loop. So that's the loop. Um, we have this CL exit for when we exit the loop. So we then add that label. And all that's left to do is return from the function. Count is already in V0, so there's nothing to be done except for the control flow. And so I need a jump register to the register RA. And that completes um, this function.